If you've ever imagined what it's like to write a TV show, you might think the finished product matches the initial creative vision of the visionaries behind the scenes. In reality though, things are often very different. Rewrites, reshoots, and completely random unexpected events can mean that the TV show you watch on screen bears little resemblance to its original form. Sometimes these changes are for the worse, but often they can completely save a show from obscurity. It's true, not every change is a disaster after all, and sometimes it's nice to raise a glass to the great last minute saviors of television. So with that in mind, I'm Will Fort Culture, and here are eight TV shows saved by ridiculously last minute changes. Number eight, Frasier was almost about a housebound paraplegic. Frasier stands the test of time as one of the greatest sitcoms ever made, but everyone's favorite pompous radio psychiatrist was almost very different. Actor Kelsey Grammer, who played the character on Cheers, was reluctant to play the same role again, and so initially, co-creators David Angle, Peter Casey, and David Lee came up with a new idea. They cast him as a housebound paraplegic publishing magnate instead. Thankfully for all concerned, Paramount thought it was was a terrible idea and insisted on a Frasier Crane spin-off. The Good Doctor was relocated from Boston to Seattle, and the rest, as they say, is history. Except it wasn't. There was still one more big change for Frasier before the show hit the screen. The role of Roz Doyle, Frasier's spunky, unlucky in love friend and producer, initially went to Lisa Kudrow. After a few rehearsals, it was decided that Kudrow, although funny, was not the right fit for the character, and Perry Gilpin was cast in her stead. Of course, Lisa didn't need to be downhearted for long though as she soon landed the part of Phoebe Buffay in a little known sitcom called Friends. Number seven, an ex-American football player was going to run Cheers. A classic ensemble comedy about a Boston bar where everyone knows your name, Cheers still holds up even today, unlike many of its peers. The sitcom launched the careers of Ted Danson, Kelsey Grammer, and Woody Harrelson, amongst others, but at least one of them came close to never descending those steps down to the Cheers bar. The original idea for Cheers featured a former American football player behind the bar, with Married With Children's Ed O'Neill considered, along with actual ex football player Fred Dreyer. In the end, Ted Danson won the role, but his lithe frame made the American football backstory unsuitable. Instead, Sam's character was rewritten as a former pitcher for the Red Sox baseball team. Dreyer did appear later in a guest stop as a sportscaster and an old friend of Danson's Sam Malone, but it was clear that without Danson's easygoing charm, Cheers would not have lasted for an amazing 11 series. Number six, JD was going to be revealed as mentally ill in Scrubs. Unlike the other shows on this list, Scrubs didn't undergo drastic changes from the pilot episode. It took a while for the show to find its feet though. Early on, writer and creator Bill Lawrence was so worried that the show wouldn't be deemed funny enough by the general public that he added in comedy sound effects. He later admitted that the sounds were annoying and they were gradually phased out in season one. But the really big change that helped save Scrubs didn't appear until the second series and all it took was the show's renewal. The sitcom was under near permanent threat of cancellation throughout its run, so much so that it's amazing it made it to nine seasons, but Lawrence was so sure that they would not make it past one year that he had a big twist planned to bow out with. If you re-watch season one, you'll notice that the nameless janitor, played by improv genius Neil Flynn, does not interact with any character other than Zach Braff's JD. The reason for this is because Lawrence planned to reveal that the janitor was in fact a figment of JD's imagination at the end of the first season. Thankfully, the show was picked up for another year, Lawrence dropped the ill-conceived the main character has a serious mental illness plot twist, and integrated the janitor into the main cast. This allowed for more improvised jokes and monologues from Flynn, and opened up the possibilities for more comedic B-plots that helped Scrubs achieve classic status, for a few years at the very least. Number five, Jack Shepard was due to die in the Lost pilot episode. To say Lost was divisive is probably underplaying it. The drama about a group of plane crash survivors marooned on a mystical island pretty much divided people into two groups. Those who felt the writers had a grand plan behind all the red herrings and mysteries, and those who felt they were chances making it up as they went along. The truth is, as ever, somewhere in the middle. Co-creator of the show, J.J. Abrams, did write a series bible to outline the show's 
most complex mythology, but it is also doubtless that unplanned changes and uncertainty over how long the show would have to tell its story affected their grand vision. In fact, the show's mythology had to be amended early on. Jack Shepard, de facto main character and leader of the Oceanic Survivors, was never supposed to lead his friends off the island. The original plan was for Jack to be played by a big name. Michael Keaton was in mind for the role, for the audience to believe he would be the main character. Then, in a classic lost bait and switch, he would be killed off in the pilot, leaving the audience to watch the rest of the castaways survive without their leader. Network executives, in a rare showing of foresight, thought audiences would react badly to the death of a heroic main character so early on, and insisted that Jack live. The pilot was retooled and Jack became a key player instead of an attention-grabbing cameo. Whatever you think of Lost, it's undeniable that the show was made much better for it. Number 4. Captain Kirk didn't exist in Star Trek's original pilot There have been a lot of Star Trek series, but we're going back to the 1960s original run for this entry. Everything about the original series is iconic, from the costumes and sets to the actors William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy, who have become so synonymous with their roles that even the retooled and rebooted blockbuster film versions of Star Trek feature lead actors largely doing their best Shatner and Nimoy impressions. But amazing as it may seem, Shatner wasn't the shoe in for the Captain Kirk gig that you might have thought. In its 1965 pilot episode called The Cage, Shatner wasn't even recording the captain's log. Instead, the role went to Jeffrey Hunter, best known for co-starring with John Wayne in The Searchers, and the character was called Captain Christopher Pike. Nimoy was there as Spock, though his character was not first officer and displayed many more human characteristics than the cold, logical Spock fans would later come to know and love. The actual Spock-like role went to a character called Number One, played Made by creator Gene Roddenberry's then-wife, Michelle Barrett. NBC chose not to pick up the pilot, deciding it needed more action and was too slow and cerebral for audiences. Instead of rejecting the show outright though, the network ordered a second pilot and this became the show's first official episode. The second pilot featured Captain Kirk with Shatner in the role and had jettisoned number one in favour of promoting the newly logical and less human Spock. Number 3. The Big Bang Theory Was Unrecognisable The Big Bang Theory was a comedy juggernaut, swiftly growing into America's biggest sitcom after it first aired back in 2007. It took some time for it to be picked up by a network though. Its original pilot was put together back in 2006 and had to be significantly retooled before it would even make it to air. Even creator Chuck Law admitted that it sucked. Main characters Sheldon and Leonard were kept on for the series proper, but the original pilot's female lead Katie, described as a street-hardened, tough-as-nails woman with a vulnerable interior, who moves in with the two scientists after a breakup, was replaced by Penny, a naive, somewhat dim, wannabe actress. In addition to her, the characters of Raj and Howard were created as fellow nerds and work colleagues for Sheldon and Leonard. The much-changed version of The Big Bang Theory stuck a chord with audiences much more than the original attempt did, and seeing how filthy rich everyone involved with the show became, it was a change for the better. Number 2. Seinfeld would have had a sassy waitress as a main character As we've seen already, it's not unusual for TV shows to change drastically between the pilot episode and the main show. The pilot is often an opportunity to try out ideas and characters and see how they play with the audience. Seinfeld was one show that made drastic changes from the pilot episode, and the changes helped it become one of the greatest sitcoms in history. Some changes were cosmetic. The show was originally saddled with the unwieldy and portentous title the Seinfeld Chronicles, and breakout character Kramer was called Kessler, and for no reason at all he had a dog. But the biggest difference between the pilots and the show it became was the fact that there was no Elaine. Instead, the only female influence was a waitress at Pete's named Claire. When the show finally made it to air as Seinfeld, Kessler was Kramer and the dog had gone, and most importantly, Jerry's ex-girlfriend Elaine was a bona fide member of the main cast of lovable misanthropes. Sitcom history had been born. Number 1. Jesse was supposed to die in Series 1 of Breaking Bad the one thing every Breaking Bad fan can agree on is that they love Jesse Pinkman. He's the show's resident, lovable junkie and drug dealer, but he almost didn't last long enough to become a fan favourite. Series creator Vince Gilligan originally had an entire different plan for Aaron Paul's character, and it was only an unexpected writer's strike that saved his bacon. Gillian's plan had been for Walter White's protege to meet his end in Season 1's final episode at the hands of manic drug cartel leader Tuco, but the 2007 strike by the 
Writers Guild of America cut the show's debut season short at just six episodes rather than the originally intended nine. In the gap between seasons one and two, Gillian and his production team decided that Jesse was too great a character and Paul too great an actor to discard after just a handful of appearances. The decision to keep the character alive spurred the show on to true greatness, Jesse's moral disillusionment growing as a mirror to Walter's ever-increasing thirst for power and legacy. Were it not for a strike and an unexpectedly short first season, Breaking Bad would have been very different, and probably so too would Paul's career. And there you have it folks, 8 TV shows saved by ridiculously last minute changes. Feel free to let us know what you think in the comments down below, and like this video if you enjoyed it. I'm Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.